All right, last video was a little bit more of a drama pick one hey, 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 hey. so i thought we're gonna go balance that out with me basically swooning over my favorite artists and specifically ones that i think y'all will be able to learn a gargantuan amount of knowledge from we'll also learn about atlas vpn the sponsor of this video but more on them later before some of y'all comment sam does arts already made a vid like this i know and i thought that video was fire so i'm gonna do one too but actually <laughs> to make it a little bit different each one of the artists I've picked out at some point or another has actually really inspired the way I draw and I'll actually be presenting their work to you in chronological order as I discover them in my own learning journey. So with that said, let's give some solid gas to these artists. Now, when as a wee little lad, can you believe it I did not have an iPad at birth that came out of my mother's womb with me to draw on like some of the young art babies have today. No, I started out with la pen and la paper. And so at the time, Mark Crilly was the man I watched. And some of y'all might be like, who is this boomer? And I'm here to tell you, watch your freaking mouth. Cause this dude is like the godfather of like YouTube art tutorials. And I'm pretty sure if my memory serves me correct, he was like the first art YouTuber to hit one million subscribers. Basically, he'd post a video every week drawing some random specific thing. Like, like look at these videos, man. How to draw a realistic eye, 31 million views. How to draw a wolf, 6.5 million views. How to draw an innocent looking manga girl, 6.3 million views. Brother, this guy was him. He was the OG, the king, and thanks to him, like I got inspired to keep drawing throughout my childhood. Oh, and by the way, the legend still uploads, so if you grew up with Mark Crilly, just go show him some love. Next artist. I actually found this artist after a little bit little boop boop little time skip. Ate Gailan was one of the first artists I started watching again after I decided to take art a little bit more seriously. I was just so inspired by his work that his art book was actually one of the first art books I have ever bought. I mean just looking at his work I fell in love with his compositions and especially the textures found in his pieces. I mean like you got this complex background with all sorts of different foliage and he just manages to build it up in such a way that makes it look so simple yet so eye tingling, eye catching. I enchanting around 2020 was when I first started watching all his videos and I just I think they're a great help to anyone who wants to start taking their art to the next level I just remember he was able to break down his thought process to a T and made it really easy for literally anyone to understand by the way did I mention that he was a Riot Games artist and then he left Riot and created his own art studio called Envar <laughs> like dude is a certified legend during that time, I also had like a learn from the old masters phase, so I heavily, heavily studied the works of Edgar Payne and Craig Mullins. Edgar Alwyn Payne was a very much a traditional painter and he did hella landscapes, but the way he just played with color is just so amazing. He also like lets you see the thickness of the brush strokes he used and the direction of the strokes in his final piece just French kiss. What did he say? <laughs> <laughs> Chef's kiss, my bad. But yeah, it turns out like they're called the old masters for a reason. I almost never used colors before, so studying pain like really helped me lose the fear of choosing colors and just enjoy how beautiful good colors could be in a painting. Like remember in Avatar The Last Airbender when Aang was scared of the power firebending held? But then when he and Zuko went on an adventure and learned from the original firebenders, the dragons, and they learned that the source of the fire is actually love and that it can be wielded for good and then the fire turned out to be like insanely beautiful instead of dangerous? Yeah, that was me. I was Aang. <laughs> During that time, I got like over the fear of colors through my studies of Edgar Payne. Like, look at these cracks of oranges on the clouds and the mountain peaks. Like, that just doesn't happen in real life. But guess what? It still looks absolutely beautiful. And, you know, through Edgar Payne's studies, I was just... I, I was able to use color again. The next old master, well... He's not really like, he's not that super old where he was born like a hundred plus years ago, but Craig Mullins is known as the godfather of digital painting. In regards to his work, like, what is there not to love? Just look! 
His colors are amazing, his compositions are out of this world, but what I really tried to capture in my time learning from his work was just the sheer level of complexity within his paintings. And he really does embody that like painterly mindset of like zoomed out everything looks like crisp and rendered as one could make it, but then you zoom in and you see all the little brush strokes and bits of texture that at that scale <laughs> just doesn't make sense. I mean, oh my goodness! Like, would you just look at this view? And a lot of the pieces you see are like game art that he worked on, and I'm just sitting there like, yo, I played that! And that sort of made me want to like pursue game art instead of animations and movies. So big up to Craig Mullins. Next up, we got a small artist by the name of Ross Draws. <laughs> okay, so this man right here, like, he is the single biggest reason I love art the way I do now. Every drawing of his was just an absolute banger and he took the love I had for anime and video games and just with every piece he posted it inspired me to just shoot for the moon with my art. <laughs> like look at this Howl and Sophie painting he did. Oh brother! <laughs> the colors, the composition, the color dodge, the storytelling is another thing that is just a tier above. And if you ain't inspired by these photos, well damn! Maybe you should, um, retire? <laughs> no, I'm joking, don't quit. Nah, but Ross Draw's videos were just so fun and bubbly, and the art that goes alongside with him just left a permanent impression on my art journey. Oh, and Ross's Illustration Master Course series, that was free, mind you, is one of the best produced, helpful YouTube art tutorial series ever. Period. So thank you, Mr. Tran. Legend. The next legend we got is actually Atlas VPN. <coughs> Atlas VPN will inspire you to take your internet browsing to the next level. Atlas VPN is a VPN service that obviously protects your data by browsing the web with anonymity as well as letting you browse from anywhere in the world so that you can watch your favorite Netflix shows without pesky geo restriction. But on top of that, Atlas VPN will also block ads and malware. It blocks all malicious links, ads and trackers, and even notifies you when someone is trying to steal your data. And can you believe that they even have the best VPN deal on the market right now? For only $1.83 per month, plus 3 months extra, with a 30 day money back guarantee, you'd be foolish for not jumping on their summer deal today. Sign up now and join the already 6 million users who are browsing the internet with Atlas VPN protection. The incredible deal is linked down in the description as well as in the pinned comment. Did I also forget to mention that Atlas VPN will get you the best deals while shopping online for online subscriptions, airlines, hotels and more. And come on now, why wouldn't you take advantage of great savings? And all of this available on all your devices with a single Atlas VPN subscription. So what are you waiting for? You've probably thought about getting a VPN service before, so right now is the best time to do it. <laughs> no, but seriously, I like I checked and Atlas VPN really does have a killer deal going on right now. But remember, this deal is only available for a limited time, so make sure you take advantage of the ridiculously low pricing of this summer deal, or should I say summer steal, by clicking on the link in the description or in the pinned comment. Thanks again to Atlas VPN for sponsoring this video. Next up, we got Redum. Their work is in like this anime style, but the textures and the compositions are just so otherworldly. Worldly, not wordly. On top of that, the lighting is just immaculate. The hard versus the soft light shapes just huh, make me tear up. The details found in Redum's works is just insane too. Like, everything's insane. Like, look at this tree here. Look at these outlines. How did Redum find such a good use of outlines? Look at this piece. Look at the flowers here. That is some crispiness right there, man. Look at this piece. The way everything flows. The atmosphere. <laughs> this is what happens when you master all those elements and principles of design your art teacher keeps telling you about. But yeah, if there's one thing that inspires me the most is it's just how incredible the lighting is in Redum's work. Absolutely sensational. And as you might be able to tell so far, <laughs> lighting is kind of what I get fixated on. So maybe it starts to make you think. You should Maybe you should try and get good at understanding how light works. Which brings me to my boy, Sam Does Arts. <laughs> I mean, come on. It's no secret that I was inspired by Sam. You can see it in my art. The way he renders so simply, yet he still manages to create absolutely gorgeous rendered out pieces is literally insane. The fact that he can draw in like 2 hours is also insane. 
His understanding of color and lighting has inspired a ton of artists to pursue drawing in this like western Disney like style. <laughs> Actually, you know, he basically created his own genre at this point. Like, you know how there's like an anime art style? <laughs> there is a Sam Does Art art style. And to just have that type of influence on the art community is insane. And it's well deserved. Like, look at the hair here. Zoomed out, very nice, crisp hair. Zoom in, boom, bunch of squiggles. And then the roughness of the sketch still appearing on the final image, complemented with the smooth rendering, is a staple in his work. And I think his art just helps so many people because he makes it like achievable to draw like him. He's been completely transparent with how he paints and how he like mostly uses the basic default brushes. And so people follow his videos and feel like they actually might be able to draw like him one day. I mean, bruvs, look at the ground here. It looks so real and crisp next to the background. <laughs> it's odd that I'm swooning over the ground in this piece. Yes, but I think, I mean, it's justified. 10 out of 10 crispiness. Another small artist that influenced me so, so much. <laughs> All right, next up, we got an artist who goes by Caleb Raiditz. And like, obviously, all these artists I've mentioned are like god tier at rendering colors and whatnot. But Caleb here just has the most wholesome, cozy Instagram feed where he basically exclusively posts painting of our little ghost friend on random adventures. A ghost fishing, a ghostly picnic, a ghostly road trip. <laughs> and it's like you expect the ghost to be scary and like, you know, portrayed in a spooky way. But nah, a ghostly convenience store pickup. Like, it's just so wholesome and the storytelling is incredible. Like look at how the light interacts with the entire scene here. The hard light it creates on the right side of the ghost, then you got like the soft bounce light popping back from the little crease, the cool color temperature of the foreground and then the background being warm and bright, <laughs> like it's incredible. Then just look at the reflection and how the light hitting the ghost reflection appears warmer than on the actual ghost. And then even once in a while, Caleb comes out with an animation. What can they not do, man? Go show Caleb some love. <laughs> Absolutely incredible work to learn from. Next artist. <laughs> now hold on to your socks, because this next artist might blow them away. So I'm on Shea Chen's website, and just through the eye test, immediately, not even 10 seconds in, like you look at Shea's Yesterday Once More illustration series and you just have a collection of pieces with just insane color work and with such unique scenes. Just look at how many colors are in this small little cube of the painting and then when you zoom out they all look like they blend together as a whole. Like this is like color harmony mastered. Absolutely incredible. Look at this painting here and look at the shadow of this character's leg. You have like the teal color from the background, but then you have like this warm transition probably coming from the dress's bounce light. And then you have like this wiggly saturated outline that breaks off from the shadow for some reason. Like, oh my goodness. <laughs> I am literally speechless. But wait, there is more. You have that one incredible style and then you get pieces like these. <laughs> like this is straight out of an old master's painting sketchbook. Like, to be so incredible at drawing one certain way, but then to be able to draw in, like, an almost completely different style is, is like, leave some creative juices for the rest of us, Shea. Like, just look at how creative this is. Like, Shea mashed the traditional painter's style for the background and then mixed in the digital style for the girl. And damn! Like, I cannot express how incredible her work is. There are not enough words in the English dictionary. Oh my goodness, and she has made a game with her art. What can she not do? Oh my, I need to get off this website before I blow a gasket. Okay, okay, she is insane. But final artist that inspires me and will inspire you too is the man, the myth, the legend, Scott Sterling. <laughs> No. Scott Christian Saval. First of all, fire name, absolutely heat. And then second, his shorts on YouTube are the most uplifting, wholesome art content out there. If you're ever feeling down about your terrible art, like I do so very often, Scott will reassure you that everything is gonna be alright. And all the art worries you have, he's, he's probably already experienced them, and he'll tell you how he got through them, or how he manages the bad feelings that sometimes come from a painting. 
and his messages are always so uplifting like you have no choice but to feel inspired to draw again after producing utter garbage <laughs> well if you, if you can't tell i just like scroll through his shorts when i'm in art blog or feeling pathetic so I'm so glad to have someone like Scott in the community because he's just an incredible source of positivity and I feel like he started blowing up right when the art community needed a beacon of wholesomeness. When the art community needed him most, he actually appeared. He's like the art father of YouTube. Hopefully he doesn't go for some milk anytime soon. <laughs> Alright guys, there are 10 of my favorite artists who have inspired me through the years and they've gotten me to where I am today. And I know they're gonna inspire you. I mean, I mean, heck, have you seen Shea's work? Hopefully, maybe I introduced you to a couple of artists you haven't heard about because, you know, we all love finding a new artist and just swooning over their work while calling our own art trash. <laughs> it's in our nature. Be sure to check them out. I'll put the links in the description. Alrighty, if you want to be inspired by me instead, you can go subscribe and I'll see you next video.